Since their debut in 1963, the X-Men have battled legendary villains like Magneto, Apocalypse, and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Unfortunately, not every X-Men villain is as gifted or talented as the youth at Professor Xavier's school. In fact, some are just downright idiotic with the mutant ability to be lame as hell in spite of all efforts to the contrary. But on today's episode of The Dan Cave, we're gonna celebrate those god-awful goobers in the X-Men rogues gallery with a rundown of the best worst X-Men villains of all time. Onslaught. If you ever wondered what it'd look like if Professor X and Magneto had a baby, then it sounds like we've been reading the same fanfiction. Unfortunately, the result in real life was Onslaught, the bastard child of Magneto and Professor X's subconscious, and it was basically the living embodiment of bad 1990s comic book excess. This overpowered goon managed to seemingly kill the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, when in reality they were sent to an even dumber pocket dimension. And honestly, this is the ultimate example of something that sounds cool on paper, but winds up being downright obnoxious, kind of like professional rollerblading. Why are you in the X Games? You're not a sport, you just suck. Peepers! Jack Kirby was, by all accounts, the king of comics, and without him, we wouldn't have some of the most amazing Marvel characters we know and love today. But even kings make mistakes, as evidenced by Peepers, this goofy-ass mutant who looks like the offspring of Dobby the House Elf and Bat Boy from Weekly World News. Remember him? His powers? Well, as his name might suggest, he's, uh, real good at seeing. Like, super good at it. That's it. It's just a damn shame that Predator X didn't eat this poor bastard alive even sooner. Black Tom Cassidy. What could be more terrifying than a cackling Irish stereotype who's able to shoot concussive blasts through a wooden shillelagh? To be honest, pretty much anything, like spiders. Spiders are way more terrifying than this dumbass. But Black Tom Cassidy was not a spider, unfortunately. He was Banshee's crappy cousin with the power to control plant life. Except unlike Poison Ivy, this dude sucks more than the kombucha your friend made in his garage. Hopefully he can find a new lease on life in Deadpool 2 where he's rumored to be the villain, but then again, he was defeated in the Deadpool comics by a fart-powered gasoline ass cannon, so I'm not very hopeful. Hashtag drive by. Sugar Man. With a powerful tongue, the ability to alter his own mass at will, and a superhuman intellect, Sugar Man unfortunately straight up sucks. <laughs> With the design of an apocryphal all real monster, this evil geneticist from the future is real good at setting up sinister sounding plans, only to have them blow up in his face as the X-Men repeatedly dunk on him. If he had more follow through, maybe he wouldn't be on this list, but as it stands now, he's always going to be the unspeakably ugly bridesmaid and never the unspeakably ugly bride. I scream, finally, there comes a villain who might give Condiment King a run for his preposterous money. I scream, as his name might suggest, was an evil mutant who had the incredible ability to turn his body into any flavor of ice cream imaginable, including banana split. This delicious dingus somehow managed to infiltrate the X-Mansion and the Danger Room through his sweet, creamy stealth, but was ultimately defeated by being frozen solid as a block of ice cream, then humiliated by being decorated as a sundae by a birthday clown called Obnoxio, who didn't even stay to perform at Kitty's birthday! What the hell, dude? They paid you! Forearm. A character so dumb and on the nose, I'm surprised I didn't go back in time and accidentally create him myself. Thanks, Rob Liefeld. A founding member of the terrorist group, the Mutant Liberation Front, Forearm is a mutant with, you guessed it, four arms! That's, that's f***ing it. That's like if they called Wolverine Claw Hands, or Colossus Steel Skin, or Jubilee Completely Useless. <laughs> Just kidding, Jubilee fan, she's only mostly useless. Kind of like Forearm. Ahab. Was your first reaction upon reading Herman Melville's literary classic Moby Dick, yo, that whale was cool and all, but what if Ahab was a racist cyborg from the future? If so, you might be Walt Simonson and Jackson Guise, who created Ahab, a geneticist who got tricked into cutting off his leg with a laser, so he became a cyborg mutant hunter in the Days of Future Past universe. I mean, sure, you can try to tell me that he was a horseman of Apocalypse, but so was Psylocke and X-Men Apocalypse, and she didn't do jack sh so shut up. At least DC Comics had the decency to make a whale into a crappy villain instead of this peg-like doofus. F you, Ahab. F you. You wanna keep all that rage in there? Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> he sucks. Jeb Lee. And speaking of preposterous crappy and preposterously crappy horsemen of apocalypse, what about a confederate soldier who plays a drum that uses a special frequency to give people cancer? You know, that old chestnut, that old what the f chestnut are you talking about, chestnut? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Giving people drum cancer is all about states' rights or whatever, but that doesn't mean this murderous moron should get a pass. And those, my friends, are some of the best, worst, most WTF-worthy X-Men villains of all time. But tell me, which is your favorite? Who would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below and give me a horribly mutated thumbs up while you're there.
Now be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show about the story of a group of renegade ronin who have to take care of a sweet dog and battle vampires in Seven Samurai Am Legend. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At D20 Athletics asks, In a legal vacuum, is it more moral to fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Well, that's a great question. This is a debate that's raged since time immemorial. The answer is actually neither. It would be immoral to do battle with a horse-sized duck since this wretched megafauna is clearly the last of its kind and you might render it extinct if you fight it. Likewise, have you ever seen a miniature horse? They're adorable, little Sebastian. Duck-sized horses would be even cuter, and I can't condone that kind of cute murder. So honestly, the only answer is to let them destroy you and hope that you have the fortune to be reborn as one of these two wonderful, majestic creatures. But tell me, which do you think is more moral? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.